Hey folks, this is Grease the Scotsman. This Mero SDK level authoring tutorial will cover how to create and link zones together, and with a little care and planning, show how you can, in many cases, organize the static geometry in your level to nearly automate the creation process. Several examples will also be covered that underscore the importance of line of sight and combat gameplay considerations when linking zones together. First, let's enable tools that will help us create, edit, and link zones with ease. Click anywhere in the scene to give it focus, and then press spacebar to bring up the Unity Overlays menu. Then, select Zone Creation and Linking Overlay. Zones with zone links have a lot of flexibility, but one of their requirements is that they need to be uniquely named in the hierarchy. The tools try to prevent duplicate zone names by basing the name of the zone on the geometry that's used to create it. For the remainder of this tutorial, I'll be referring to zones with zone links as just zones for brevity. Other configurations of zones, like zones with zone events, will be covered in another tutorial and will be referred to explicitly to avoid confusion. And rather than saying zone creation and linking overlay, I'll just say zone tools. The zone tools are designed with several different methods of geometry creation in mind. To that end, I'm going to provide examples that use geometry built from ProBuilder, models imported from Blender, and some homegrown modular pieces that are fit together to fashion rooms and hallways. While it is certainly possible to create poorly optimized meshes, there is no right way to make level geometry. The hope is that the zone tools are flexible enough to accommodate whatever workflow is best for you. The zones with zone links do not need to perfectly conform to the static geometry that envelops them, but having collider bounds of the zone link slightly inset from the geometry protects the trackers of the player or other entities from being hit through walls. One of the core functions of linked zones is to track all of the entities within, so if the bounds overlap, you run the risk of unintended enter and exit events occurring. To help avoid this problem, the zone tools are designed to shape the zone to perfectly match the bounds of the geometry used to create them. Then, an inset value is applied to automatically shrink the size of the link zone slightly. This will ensure the bounds do not extend through the walls, floors, or ceiling of the room that surrounds them. In most cases, this prevents overlap without the level designer having to tediously tweak zone sizes manually. Sometimes preventing linked zone overlap is difficult if the colliders have to encompass oddly shaped geometry, or walls from separate areas are physically very close, but should not be linked to each other. Splitting the zone into multiple link zones that best fit their geometry is suggested, and the zone tools provide ways to easily do this. For complex shapes, zones with zone links can also use sphere and capsule colliders. You can even replace the box collider with a mesh collider, and enable the convex mesh and trigger toggles to define the zone's bounds. Examples of these situations will be covered later in the video. For now, let's tour the various zone creation tools. Geo Bounds. Clicking this button will create a zone with a zone link for each piece of selected geometry that are each sized to the bounds of each geometry object. Geo Bounds is ideal if you prefer working in Blender and create complex models that can't be easily split up into logical zone areas, or if using the bounds of the mesh would lead to link zone overlap issues or the bounds do not match the playable area. In these cases, it may be easier and faster to create primitive geometry that roughs out the playable area, and then quickly turns those primitives into a set of linked zones using the Geo Bounds tool. Geo Dimension. This button will create a single zone with a zone link that is sized to surround all of the currently selected geometry objects. Encapsulate Children. Clicking this button will create a zone with a zone link and encapsulates the child geometry for each selected parent game object. For example, several pieces of geometry and their colliders are collected under one empty game object parent. Selecting the parent game object and clicking the Encapsulate Children creates a single zone with a zone link that encompasses all the child geometry. If multiple parents are selected, each produce their own zone with bounds that surround the child geo of each parent. Default Zone. This button will create a zone with a zone link of a 1 by 1 by 1 meter dimensions at the position of the selected game object. This tool is intended to be used alongside the zone editing functions. Once a zone is created, it becomes the act of selection, and the zone tools will switch into edit mode to help with any needed resizing tasks. While manually editing the colliders of the zone is supported, the following tools try to automate away as much of the tedium of manually sizing zones as possible. The Fit to Neighbors button will cast a ray from the transform point of the zone 
and attempts to expand the zone's bounds until a static geometry or a neighboring zone with a zone link is hit. For best results, you're going to want to position the zone's transform such that the rays shot from its position that will hit the geometry or neighboring zones that will limit its size. The manual collider button simply turns on Unity Zone Collider Edit Mode, allowing you to manually drag and resize the collider bounds at will. Keep in mind that the collider edit mode can be used to toggle multiple colliders at once. Split by axis. You can split zones in half using the chosen axis, leaving behind two zones. The expand by axis button functions like the fit to neighbors, but allows you to execute the expansion per axis until you hit static geometry or a neighboring zone. The reset size by axis button simply resets the selected axis of the zone to one meter. If you take some care to organize your geometry, whether it's created with Blender, Pro Builder, or it's made out of a modular snap together set of pieces, you can use the zone tools to automate the zone creation process. Here's an example of geometry exported with Blender. Then each section is automatically zoned using the Geo Bounds tool with a single click. This is an example of using Geo Dimensions to quickly navigate the level and simply select at least two pieces of geometry that represent the horizontal and vertical bounds of an area. This method relies less on careful organization of the level pieces in the hierarchy, and instead allows the designer to select any geometry that makes up the outer edges of an area and turn it into a zone. This example shows how you can organize a bunch of modular pieces into groups using the game object Empty Parents, name them, and then use that grouping to automatically zone the entire level. Notice how each zone is slightly inset from the actual bounds of the objects used to create them, automating the best practice suggestion. Keep in mind that you can always set this inset to zero if you need the zone bounds to truly match the geometry, and even negative values can be used if a zone should expand beyond the bounds of its selective geometry. Zones should be linked based on line of sight. This will prevent objects and enemies from seeming to pop in and out of existence in front of the player. Linked zones accomplish this through a primary and secondary event system. When an activator enters a linked zone, it receives a primary enter event. The zones it is linked to receive a secondary entry event. Among other things, this will ensure that any entities in those linked zones are active. When deciding if the player might have line of sight to another zone, you should take into account how the Nimbus gun might be used, and factor in the crazy ways that one can jump, fling, and launch themselves in the game. The next key basis for linking zones together is combat fluidity. I personally recommend that combat areas be specifically crafted as shooting enemies without varying sight lines, elevation changes in the terrain, or obstacles to traverse is rarely engaging. In practice, this means that there are cases where line of sight is not the issue. If the player can easily retreat to an unlinked zone during a combat scenario, this will freeze any enemies that aren't in a zone linked with the player. Even though line of sight practices have been followed and the player can't see the enemy disappear, if the enemy never comes around the corner as expected after being engaged, the flow of combat is broken. Plan out your combat arena. Design them deliberately and link the zones in those areas to ensure that combat flows appropriately. Toggle on the zone lab mode when linking zones. A really handy tool when setting up zones is to toggle on zone lab mode. This will make it so that only zones are pickable in the scene view. Any selected zone will show its current link relationships with cyan colored lines. Link relationships with unselected zones are also shown in blue. Any zones that are not linked with the currently selected zone will display an add link handle. Break link handles will appear for any zones that are currently linked to the selected zones. Clicking the add or break link will apply that action to all currently selected zones. In addition to the handles in the scene view, the Add Links to Selected button is useful when you want to link all of the selected zones with each other while keeping any other link relationships intact. The Overwrite Links with Selected button simply overwrites the zone links of any selected zones with the current selection. In other words, the selected zones will be linked with each other and nothing else. Now that you know the basics, let's open a brand new level that hasn't been zoned and see how quickly we can apply the tools to create and link the zones and then we'll hop into the map in-game to see how everything works.
Before packing your palette, be sure you've added lighting, reflection probes, marked all immovable geometry as static, added light probes, baked in nav mesh, and finally, baked your lighting. Pack and install your palette once complete. Now that you have a grasp of creating and linking zones, adding zone link items like zone music and zone ambience will add flavor to your environment. The zone music and zone ambience components use the zone linking system to manage the start, stop, and continuation of audio as the player moves through the level. These items are covered in the next video in the Mero SDK level authoring tutorial series. See you in the void.